Welcome back to the Water Feature Design Series 7.1. Before you watch number eight and number nine on how to install a wetland filter, you need to watch this video because I am going to teach you how to properly size and configure your wetland. You wanna know what we're gonna learn about in this video? It's a note taker. This is what we're gonna cover. All right, crew, so one of the things you need to know is obviously how to properly size your wetland. The next thing you wanna know is how to lay out or configure your wetland. Once you have that thing configured properly for your water feature, then you have to figure out what are the proper flow rates for the wetland that I've designed. You're also going to need to know where to put it, guys. What part of your water feature landscape design is appropriate for the wetland? We're going to cover that. I'm going to talk about flow over water, and you may or may not know what that is, but we're going to address it. Then we're going to get into the aquascape stuff because there's some specifications that you're going to get from aquascapes. We do things a little differently. I'm going to share that with you. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you why the aquascapes ecosystem, because I am not an aquascapes parrot, but I truly believe in the wetland filtration components that we use to create this filter. And at the end, I'm going to tell you why I love those and why I wouldn't cut any corners or shift to a different configuration of products. Guys, stay tuned. I'm John Adams with Modern Design Aquascaping. Our team builds custom ponds, fountains, and waterfalls out of natural stone and wood. Today, my goal is to make your head explode with a bunch of information about designing a wetland filter. Stay tuned. The first thing I want to talk is about how to size your wetland properly for your water feature and some things that help me determine what is the right size to do the wetland filter. So one of the things that really is important to me in determining what is the right size of your wetland filter is what type of a feature are you building. So I'm going to start out and just talk about koi ponds because that's mostly what wetland filtration is used for. So when we're designing a koi pond, typically we'll be at a 15% margin of the koi pond. Surface area, we always work off the of surface area. So whether you're using US or metric or whatever, if you take your koi ponds, actual surface footprint, 15% is a starting point on a smaller feature. The smallest wetland that we build is gonna be an eight foot by 10 foot wetland. There's a kind of an equation that you guys are gonna use for components. We're gonna use one snorkel, one centipede, and 16 small aqua blocks in that configuration for an eight by 10 wetland. And you can do all the math at your 15%. I won't bore you with that. If I'm talking jargon about products that you guys don't understand, you need to hit a link up there to our wetland filter basics and start there and learn about the components and how they work together and all that. I'm not getting parts and pieces out and doing show and tell today. I've already got that together for you. In thinking back to the percentages of that 15% of surface area, as our ponds get bigger and bigger, I typically will stick to that until I get up above about a quarter acre pond, and then I'll go down to about a 10%. So 10% of surface area versus 15% of surface area. Once you get over that quarter acre pond for us, which is back to the math thing again, but you're like 12,000 square feet, something like that, roughly, I don't know, in that vicinity anyhow. Woo, got a little cold over there at the lake. I had to take a hiatus, bing, back to the house, little hot coffee, here we are. We were talking about percentages. Guys, you're gonna say, wow, I'm looking at prices. You're gonna look at the prices of the product and the amount of materials on a big project and you're gonna go, that's a lot. Can I do a smaller amount? My answer is yes, you can do a smaller amount. I think about biological filtration in, in the capacity that more is better. You're gonna polish your water more, but a smaller amount is going to work. So ask yourself, I'm not going to do it because it's too much. Can I do half that size? Yes, you can do half that size. And I've, I've gone in and put in a, a wetland filter that was one third of the size of what I spec for the job because that was all they could give me the budget for. It made a huge difference in the quality of the water in that pond. So my guidelines are guidelines, but there's other things that are going to have an effect on the percentages that you need to use. And I'm going to say, do what you can, make it as big as you can. You can't go back later and make it bigger. You can add another one, but enlarging a wetland is gonna be pretty much impossible. So figure out how much you can do and do the largest amount. Other types of water features that are gonna have a different type of percentage. We can go into swim ponds and talk about swim ponds, recreational ponds. I shoot for 30% of surface area on a recreational pond. That is my goal because 
you're stirring up so much more junk. There's so many more people in it. It's gonna have more organics to handle. There are things that you're going to consider that will have an effect on the size of the wetland that you're gonna spec for a particular project. So think about all of these other factors. Should I tweak the, the rule and go a little bigger on my wetland? How deep is the pond? Does, is it extra deep? Is it like more than four feet, six feet, eight feet? There comes a point when you're like, okay, I gotta think that I'm doing surface area, but I've got twice as much water to filter and I should increase the size of the filter. And then again, is there a bunch of runoff that goes into the pond? Has the client got 250 giant koi somewhere that he's gonna move in where you need to say, okay, the fish load is gonna be huge. Or are they a fanatical about how polished their water is? And you just know that you need to be on the heavy side of the design factor. So all of these things are gonna come into mind and anything else that you see when you look over a site that you say to yourself, my filter is going to have to digest a lot more material that may be a reason for you to tweak the size of your wetland. All right, so the next thing I really wanna to talk to you about is how we lay out the configuration of the wetland, and this is important. I've had a lot of people that I've been consulting with here lately that are trying to reconfigure the aqua blocks and whatnot. So we're just gonna put a, a schematic up here to show you how we lay out this one snorkel, one centipede, 16 aqua blocks, all of those components put together, and then, then basically you have a cube and you can replicate that cube as many times and ways as you want. So based on flow rates, a three inch pipe, and that's a whole nother thing, but per snorkel, eight centipedes max. And that's based on flow rates, which we'll get into in a few minutes, but that helps you lay out design work. So when you see this configuration, you know how to, how to lay your blocks out. And then we'll talk about flow rates next so that all that kind of makes sense how these things work together. Once you have your design finished, you need to understand flow rate. So that's the next step. How much water does your wetland filter need? Per centipede, we do 1,500 to 2,000 gallons per hour per centipede. That breaks down in our equation to around between 95 and 125 gallons per hour per aqua block. So if you start screwing with the configuration of aqua blocks, you need to reconfigure your map because it's all about velocity of water and the desedimentation process that happens. All these things are important. So stick with those flow rates. It's very important that you get your rates right. If you change your depths of gravel, then it's gonna have an effect on your flow rates. It's gonna have an effect on dissolved oxygen. I'm gonna do a bunch of research in my personal wetland later so that I can share with you guys more information. I hope that all this happens within the course of the next year, that we can do a little more digging into what happens to the chemistry of the water as it goes through the wetland. But that's to come later, just hold your hats for that. Placement, where do I put this wetland filter in my design when you're in the design process? Now you know how big it is and you know all this other technical stuff, but where do I put it? Where is it okay to put my wetland filter? I'm gonna say guys, I have put a wetland filter in the bottom of a pond I've put a wetland filter on the edge of a pond. I've put a wetland filter inside of the pond. I've built the reverse flow inside of a pond. I've put it in a stream because there wasn't room to put it in the pond. You can, I mean, there's a literally limitless ways for you to integrate a wetland filter. One thing, one thing is gonna remain constant for you is that you have to pull the water from the most oxygen rich area of the water feature and then feed it up through your wetland. So. If you're living in a super hot or a super cold part of our continent, country, world, whatever, you may need to take that into consideration based on where you're choosing to put it so that you don't create huge fluctuations in temperature or whatever. But I mean, other than that, I can't imagine why there's a spot that you can't integrate the wetland filtration into your system and make it be the just bomb biological filter that it is. So considering that, put it where you need to put it. There's another thing that you need to know about that I call flow over water. And what that means is, once you know how much water that your wetland needs to operate, that's the amount of water that's coming from underneath and perking up through the gravel. Flow over water is irrelevant. So if you need more waterfall coming out of your wetland than what it's feeding, you can put more out on top. You can dump water out on top. My water feature that I'm building down here at my house, I actually have jets in my pond, waterfalls in my pond, all that negative edge is off on top of my wetland. And then the water from my wetland perks up through and the whole amount flows over the top. It's triple what's feeding my wetland 
three times as much comes out of my wetland to make an awesome waterfall. Guys, it's irrelevant. If you wanna see anything about that video, there's a link to the Oasis build up here somewhere. You definitely wanna check that out because it's one of the coolest projects we've got to do in a while. But, oh, sorry, shameless self-promoter. I did it again. Anyways, that's what I got for flow over water. Next topic is the specs from Aquascape because we kind of use their specs, but we do tweak it a little to make it our own. I wanna share that with you. So with the Aquascape specs, basically if you go into the Aquascape's catalog, you can just Google that online and in their wetland filter portion of the catalog, they've got a kind of a chart in there that lays out rough sizes and configurations and how many parts you need. But what we do differently in our, in our design is that we don't build over. So their liner and their specs when they send you the kit is we're not gonna be exactly what I'm gonna use because when we come up, we come out. We like our rock work to be outside of the space of our aggregate so we get the full use of that flow. You guys, again, can see all that in our wetland installation series. Just remember, I know I'm repeating myself to your benefit, if you guys are going to change the layout of the aqua blocks in relation to the centipedes, you need to make sure that you redo your math based on flow rates so that you guys can basically maintain the same amount of flow rate that you have. So the last thing I really want to talk to you guys about is why I choose to use the Aquascape product. I get a lot of people that call me that are consulting that are asking me questions like, can I buy culvert pipe and manufacture, fabricate, whatever. There's different products. We're trying to save money. Let me tell you, I built these things. I've been building them for a long time since before they even started using aqua blocks. And I've learned the hard way that the beauty of this system is the ease of cleaning. Everything that they've done is to repair problems that I've discovered along the course of time. So by not using aqua blocks, it's impossible to back flush the system. You put the aqua blocks in by using too small a gravel, on and on and on. I don't have to bore you with all the things that I've done wrong because you don't have that much time. But let me tell you that by spending the money on the front end to use this system, when it comes time to do maintenance, when it comes time to do cleaning, when you don't have to rip all of the aggregate out of your wetland in order to get it clean, you are going to be glad that you spent the money on the front end, guys. The design is the design for a reason. Stick to the plan, stick to the show, stick to your game. Do me a favor, give us a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, interact. I wanna hear from you. What do you think about this video? I'm spending a lot of energy to teach you guys this stuff and it's important to me to know that you care. So just send me some love, do the little thing, you know, let me know what you think. I'm here for you. Guys, thanks for joining us. John G, out.